I'm 32. Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank Lord, you. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you all oh, for being so good to me. So good to me. So good to me. You were my bread. I was hungry. You were my water when I was thirsty. You were my shelter in the time of the storm. Oh, and you, you never, never, never left me alone. I want to thank you. So good to me. So good You've been so good to, to me. So good to me. Oh, you were my water when I was hungry. Oh, you were my water, water when I Yeah. 
Come on and give God praise. Oh, come on and give God praise. Come on and open up your mouths and give God what's due to him. You're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for the praise team. You're not even doing it for Bishop Reed, but you're doing it for Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, this is the first Sunday in the new year. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I was told if you start right, you'll end right. So we got to raise the temperature in this house and give God praise. Hallelujah, because God been so good to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say so good. Oh, come on and raise up your, up your mouth and say so good. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Let's give God thanks, hallelujah, for all that he's done. Hallelujah. You're blessed today. How many know that you're blessed today? shall continually be in my mouth as we stand around God's throne to embark his presence let us pray this morning for someone else that may be going through let us pray for the success of this service on this morning that a soul might be saved amen that someone might cry out what must I do to be saved on this morning let us pray Lord Jesus Christ Dear God, first of all, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord God, there were so many that didn't live to see 2023 come to an end. God, somebody made it to 1159 and you called their name. But God, you saw fit to give mercy and granted grace to us once again. And God, for that, we say thank you. Lord God, as all our righteousness is as 50 rags. So there's nothing that we could have done to warrant your favor upon us. And God, for that, we say thank you. Lord God, we thank you on this morning because you promised to be the dryer of our weeping eyes, oh God. Lord God, we ask of you on this morning that you save a soul. Lord God, that you deliver someone on this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord God, right now we move ourselves out of the way. Lord God, right now we decrease in our flesh that we might increase in spirit, oh God. God, we want you to have your way in this service on this morning. Lord God, we thank you for giving us sight beyond sight. Lord God, the ability to see what's not before us, oh God, but what's to come. God, for that we say thank you. Oh God, we need you on this morning. Hallelujah. Lord God, throw your weight around in this house. Oh God, set your feet at the table and dine with us on this morning. God, there are many that are sick on this morning. But God, we know that healing is the children's bread. God, right now, someone's captive in their mind. Oh, God, they're in the prison of depression. They're in the prison of torment. But we plead the blood of Jesus right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You have no power. You have no authority. But the power and the authority belongs to God. And because we are his children, we can say thanks be unto God that gives Give us the victory and cause us to triumph. Thank you for victory on this morning. Thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Because when they nailed him on the cross, 
sickness was nailed on the cross. When they nailed him on the cross, cancer was nailed under the cross. Diabetes was nailed on the cross. Tumors was nailed on the cross. We thank you for freedom on this morning. We thank you for freedom on this morning. Freedom in our mind, oh God. Freedom in our spirit. Freedom to praise you and give you the glory. Bless your manservant on this morning. Give strength to his body as he delivers the word of God. Let it come forth with conviction and authority. Breaking up all hollow ground. Breaking the heart of men. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. And because every promise is the A and amen. Because your word is true. We put our hands together and tell you, thank you. We put our hands together and give you the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. Oh God, we magnify your holy name. And because it is so, we say amen. And amen in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Our scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 150 on this morning. And we're going to read it in concert. And it reads, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sorcery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Put your hands together and give God the praise. He brought you over. He brought you into 2023. And that's praiseworthy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may take your seats in Jesus' name. And welcome to the live broadcast coming from the sanctuary of Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city with the people of the city in his heart. Welcome. So go ahead, turn up the volume, and let's have church. Praise, praise, praise. 
the Lord. I'm going to praise him. Oh, 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 oh. praise him. 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 Pra
something great. In 2020, 23, 23, 23, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. All he asks is that you ask him in his name, and he'll give it to you. He'll bless you. He'll open the door. Make the way. Out the way. Come on, Jesus. We need to cheer. We need to cheer. We need to cheer. We need to cheer. Come on, let's praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. That's the action. Ask God for He's going to do it. He's going to perform it. What do you want? Do you want healing? Do you want saving? Do you want deliverance? Then ask him. Ask him for it. I want it. Got to have it. I want it. Got to have it. Devil, you can't stop. Devil, you can't. You can't stop. You can't block. I find the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Every demon got to tremble. Every demon got to tremble at that name. Jesus. Jesus. Every knee shall bow. He said, if I be lifted, I will draw all men. Let us exalt. Let us exalt. Let us exalt. His name. Name together. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. When the praises pass go up, the lessons, blessings come down. 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 Come on and praise him. Every chance I get, to every chance I get, every chance I get, every chance I get, every chance I'm going to get, every chance I get, every chance I get, every chance I get, every chance I get, oh, so I'm going to praise the Lord, I'm going to praise him. I mean, know that there's no greater love. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing a praise team. There he is. No great. 
Raiders.
to give God praise. Jesus went, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch, to save a wretch like you and me, like you and me. That's the that's the come on refuge. Let's sing it together. Jesus went, Jesus went to Calvary, Calvary to save a wretch. Thank you with me, that's love, that's love. One more time, one more time, Jesus went, Jesus went to Calvary to save the rich. Thank you with me, that's love, that's love, that's love, that's love. That's love. Merciful and everlasting Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for sparing us for one more day that allowed us to go into another year. We praise you, God, for being so wonderful and so real. We thank you, God, for loving us. Oh, God, even above our own church. We thank you, God, because you have been wonderful. You've blessed our going in and our coming out. And, God, we thank you because we know that you are in control of everything. Every weapon, every force that tries to hinder us, you have already defeated it. And God, you have trampled them under your feet. And God, right now, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for loving us. We praise you for loving us. We thank you for healing power and delivering mercy. Now, God, send your anointing, send your power, send your deliverance throughout the house that there may be a blessing only as you can give. This we ask in your name. And all the people that are in love with God, put your hands together and tell them hallelujah. That's love. Praise the Lord, everybody. Before I go any further, I just want to say happy new year to every last one of you. You look like you made it over. <laughs> Anybody glad that you made it over? Yes, sir. I dare you to jump up and give God the best praise in 2023 you can. I made it. <laughs> we magnify his holy name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 2023. Oh, my God. When I was a little young man waking, um, running around and all I could see was Dick Tracy on the news comic strips. And they had the watches that they could talk to. And, and they started giving dates in the future. There was no way in my mind that I thought that I would see it. Amen. But here I am living in it. By the grace of God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited because I believe God's about to do something powerful in 2023. Look at somebody and say, it's getting ready to happen. Turn around about two or three other people. It's getting ready to happen. And that's like, I believe it's going to happen. We are saying greetings all of you that are watching via live stream we say to each and one of you that are coming through youtube and facebook god bless you and happy new year to you and to yours we are so excited about everything that god is doing amen of course those of you that are members here at refuge temple you know that this is january and in the month of january we consecrate ourselves we pray we fast amen that god would do something tremendous in this year and man amen and we're not going to omit it on this 
year. That's right. Starting on January the 3rd, we will start for 21 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. We're going to ask those of you that want to come to the church and pray during the daytime that you do that between the hours of 11 and 1. Amen. That you come out and worship the Lord in prayer in the sanctuary. The only thing that I ask is that you stop and sign in at the door to let them know that you are in the building. And we believe that during this 21 days of fasting, but the God we serve is going to move as never before. I, I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for a blessing. Amen. Don't get me wrong. I've been thanking him for everything that he's done. And matter of fact, I've been thanking him in advance. But right now, I believe that there is a great move getting ready to happen. And the devil is not happy about it, but he can't stop it. Amen. We are going to move forward in God. We're asking you to put your hands together, put your plates together, one meal a day, and fast with us in this month of January. And I guarantee you, God is going to minister to you in a special kind of way. We're looking for some powerful blessings from the Lord. We're looking for God to do some wonderful things. My father spoke with me this morning. He wanted me to let everybody know in Refuge Temple, amen, that he's praying for you and Happy New Year. So he knows by listening to the broadcast that I've done what he asked me to do. Amen. Would you turn with me to the passage that we started on last night, but instead of going just to verse 17, we want to begin at verse 15. That's 2 Kings chapter number 6. We will begin our reading at verse number 15, and we will conclude at the end of verse number 17. Amen. That is that 2 Kings chapter number 6. Amen. We begin our reading at verse number 15. And conclude at the end of verse number 17. And it reads on this wise to your hearing. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, as a host compassed the city of both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he might see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elijah. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading of his word, sanctified deep within his heart, in our hearts in Jesus' name. Before you're seated, just look at somebody and say, your vision has been corrected. Amen. Say it to somebody else, your vision has been corrected. How often, and you know, we've been really through some stuff in this last couple of years, haven't we? 2020 was, ooh, the whole world shut down, amen. 2021, amen, we didn't know how we're going to make it from day to day or moment to moment. 2022, uh, we kept dealing with variances. Every time we think that uh, corona had left us and was sitting down somewhere, it rose up again. Then on top of it rising up again, we had to deal with the flu and other environments. We have to deal with high blood pressure, hypertension. And one of the things that seemed to creep in so readily and so quickly into the church was the thing of depression. Amen. It has not left itself outside of the church, but it's here. It's walking around. It's sitting in the pew next to you. Amen. They are putting on a happy face. Amen. They're smiling because they see you and they haven't seen you in a while. Amen. But they're dealing with the loss. They're dealing with difficulty. They're dealing with loneliness. Being alone, not having anybody around to talk to. They're dealing with all of those issues and problems. They're dealing with some difficult things. We have been literally wrestling with some stuff. Amen. Then we are those individuals that have to take care of loved ones. Amen. They're sick and we're the only individual that has the ability to take care of them. We're nursing them. We don't even have time for ourselves. Don't have time to do anything. We're wrestling with some stuff. It goes, you might as well say it, it has been a very difficult time. And you're saying, well, Bishop, this is the new year. Oh, my God, why are you being so depressing? You should have been here last night. We danced. 
<laughs> but now we're talking about how to prepare for the future how to walk into the promises of God, how to believe that God is at work in our lives, how we have to see him move as he's never moved before. Are you listening to me? How often do you feel that the odds are stacked against you? How often do you get up and just dredge getting dressed to go to that job? I've been praying that God would give you a new job, but not just the money, but I was praying that he would give you an environment that is positive, that when you begin to work there, you won't have any problems. Some of you get the money, but you got problems there. I'm praying that God would open those doors for you and surround you with individuals that are going to be a blessing of like kind. Somebody that's ready to follow Christ and be like God and be like who he is. I'm praying that that would fall upon your lot. That God would do it for you. How many often do we feel like the odds are stacked against us? People don't like us. I am so very tired of hearing the saints say, they don't like me. Amen. They don't. That's the, we're wrestling against the wrong stuff. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. His spiritual wickedness, that's where it is. It's in the atmosphere. Hey, Amen. You got to remember that this was Satan's domain before Jesus came back and snatched the keys of life and death from him. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Hey, Amen. And put the Holy Spirit to rule and operate in it. Before then, Satan had dominion over everything. He's in, he is the prince of the air. But I want to let you know, for greater is he, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You've got power, you've got authority, you've got anointing. He says, after I go, he says, I'm going to do this. You're going to, and greater works than these shall you do. That's God at work in your life. He's moving as he's never moved before. How many of you still feel that the odds are stacked against you? How many of you, how many times do you feel that we have no chance of succeeding? They've been telling me all along from a young child, you'll never be anything. You'll never accomplish anything. They've been telling you this for all your life. And you don't know whether or not you have the ability to succeed anymore. But that's the enemy talking to your mind. Amen. The battle is not one on the outside they're wrestling with your mind the warfare is in your mind that's why you got to quote the word he said i will keep those in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him and the process is getting ourselves into the position they will do all kind of things to get us off track amen to think make us think about what they're doing instead of what is my 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 my, my, my the, the uh uh, presiding apostle at one time when me and him were sitting down and we were talking he said to me these words and it stuck me he said it's the empty wagon that makes the most noise oh i'm preaching hard right about now Ooh, this is the first sunday too lord in 2023 i done took my b12 i'm ready <laughs> here it is we're dealing with this and you have to know that we're struggling in our minds. We're wrestling with stuff. They're trying to steal our jobs. They're trying to steal our way of, in, of taking care of ourselves and providing for our family. They're looking and plotting to try to destroy us. But you know, no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. And we stop there, but you have to read on and say, and no lying tongue. No, I'm preaching this. Not one of them are going to survive against you. Amen. And the only reason why it, allow, why it happens or why it becomes victorious is because you allow it to be. Because God has said it. And you've got to be anchored in his word to understand that God cannot lie. If he said it, it has to come to pass. Amen. How it is? Do we feel that there's no chance of us succeeding? How easily are we tempted to give up? As soon as things don't go the way we want them to go, the first thing that we do is say, I'm quitting. I'm tired. I'm not going. I'm leaving. Because there's some struggles in our lives. There's nothing that has happened in your life that you have not had to struggle for. Amen. There's nothing that you have not had to work hard for. If it was something that you really wanted and something that belonged to you, you had to work for it. 
I remember the hardest time as a young man. I was I was young and I was uh, uh, they had these working cards and I'm going to get back to the tech. Amen. And my uh, and you had to be a certain age to get a job. And I remember going into the living room and I needed five dollars. Now done. When I was growing up, five dollars was a whole lot. Amen. There was no way, shape, form, or fashion I was going to ask my mama or my daddy for some money for some Jordans that cost two hundred dollars. I'm not buying. I'm not arguing or debating what you're doing for your time. But in my lifetime, in my face, in my era, amen, I wanted a pair of pro kids, and it was only $10.99, amen, but it was difficult at that time, amen, so I understood it, and I said to my dad, I needed $5, he said, okay, wait a minute, let me see what I could do, amen, he said, put your clothes on, put your shoes on, we're going to see what's going to happen, I didn't know, I thought he was going to have to take me to the bank in order to get $5, that's what I thought, I said, well, I'm going, I asked my father, and he was going to provide for me, he took me by the hand, and he walked me down about three or four blocks from where we worked and went over to the next avenue and he took me into the grocery store. I said, why are we in the grocery store when I asked him for five dollars? Amen. He took me to the owner of the place who he knew personally and he said to the owner when we got there, he needed a job. <laughs> Here it is. We are struggling with some stuff. We're struggling with young parents trying to be grandmothers. We're trying to be young people that try. We are struggling with the environment that we live in that is wrestling and trying to hold us down. But the God we serve that we are the in church, we are the salt of the earth. And the reason why it has not been dissolved because we're still here. It's your praise and your prayers that keeping things from totally falling apart. How easily we want to give up. How easily. I'm easily, I'm tired, I'm leaving. I'm tired, I quit. I'm not going to do this no more. They don't respect me. Hey, that's the enemy's job to bother you like that. Where is your fortitude? Where is your strength that tells you I'm not going to quit? I'm on assignment from God. Oh, I'm on assignment. Amen. I may not see it right now, but you will see it after a while. When your vision is corrected, you will see what God has in store for you. Oh, my God. Do you feel huh, like you won't have a chance? That They're not going to give you a chance. Amen. They're saying, I'm old, too old to do it. The devil is alive. You ain't too old. Unless you're just trying to use age for some sympathy. I, 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 it's Sunday morning, huh? and I'm just talking so that you can understand it. Here it is. There was something that we were doing, and, and Pastor Bonner was here. He had on his uh, uh, work jacket and some pant dungarines, as he called them, and he was working and moving a table, and I saw him moving it when I came down. So I ran to him to grab the table so that he didn't have to carry it because I felt that he was my spiritual father. I didn't need him to do that. All I needed him was just to pray fast and work. With. Let me do the heavy lifting. Amen. When I grabbed the table, he gave me a look <laughs> that I took my hand off the table and he said go get your own the problem is that we don't want to work we don't want to work in the house we don't want to work in the real kingdom we want to control it but we don't want to work to put your hand to the plow and if you're not willing to put your hand to the plow you need to get out of the way got to work in 2023 we got to work put aside all the other stuff and work for the kingdom of god oh god we are struggling with it the servant in this story and i kind of want to talk about it the story in this story is much like that he wakes up in the morning and he's still in uh, he sees, and when he comes up in that morning, an entire army is against him. This is what he sees when he wakes up in the morning. Before he has this cup of Starbucks, amen, or his Dunkin' Donut coffee, he looks out the window and looks out the doors and sees that there is a storm of army of individuals surrounding them on all sides. And he flips out, amen. I can't necessarily say that I wouldn't do this. I think that if I came out of my house, amen, and I saw nothing but a bunch of folk ready to beat me up and jump on me. Hey Amen. I'd have to get my hammer. 
<laughs> but it is. He flips out. He finds himself in a position where he'd never been in before. He says, he begins to understand it's surrounding him. It's all sides. I, I understand it. I feel that even I or you might have reacted the same way. He runs to Elijah and he says, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And Elijah replies to him. He says, do not be afraid. Look at somebody and say, no matter what you're getting ready to go through, don't you be afraid. <laughs> Speak it into the atmosphere. Matter of fact, turn around and say, don't be afraid. Surround yourself with it. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about anything. Don't be afraid. I don't care what they say. Don't, surround yourself with it. And they have to understand that God is in, in control. He is. He says, do not be afraid. And then he goes on to say, and this is the amazing part that I love about the text. He says, and the army that fights for us is greater than the one against us. And I need you to understand that. And the army that fights for us is greater than them that are against us. Amen. You better realize and say, nah, 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 nah. You can't stop me because of who I belong to. Now, you may say, Bishop Reed, why are you saying it like that? When we were kids, amen, we would look at ah, ah, ah. My little sister would step behind me and say, ah, 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 that's my big brother. And I want you to know that not only do you have a big brother, but you have a God that is committed to you. And he's not going to let you fail. Not going to let you be defeated. God, you need to scream up in here. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. <laughs> Elijah, amen, praise to God. Amen. This is the part that I talked about last night. It's absent from the church. It's absent from the house. It's absent from the families. Amen. We don't come together. I've asked you to come every Monday and put your families together and pray. Amen. It's prayer time. It's absent. But Elijah shows us the power of prayer. How many of you know that prayer still works? Oh, God. How many of you know that prayer is still active? It operates. It operates as never before. Here it is. He begins to understand that there are things that God is about to do. Amen. He prays. God, he, Elijah prays to God. And the servant's eyes are open in front of him. And the entire mountain is full of chariots of fire. But they are the army of God. I, I want you to know that if you don't realize it, you're not walking by yourself even when you're operating on your daily basis. Amen. If you had your vision corrected, you would know that on your right side is who? goodness and on your left side is mercy amen they're walking with you they're protecting you through all of the things that the enemy may throw out and if there comes a time that he cannot win that goodness and mercy does not have the strength to win he will dispatch his angel amen that will come with the fiery sword to protect you look at somebody and say i'm protected i'm protected i'm protected here it is. It's full of horses. It's the army of the Lord. These things may seem like they're not getting better. They might look like they're seeming to be difficult. Maybe it seems that they won't give or get better, that they're not going to get better. They're going to continue to do what they need to do. It's looking that it's hard and it's difficult. Maybe you can't seem to find hope in darkness. Amen. The scene. But I want you to know, amen, I am the light. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about me. Wherever I go, I am the light, even in a dark place, because of God that's in me. Somebody ought to scream up in here. Amen. You illuminated because of God. He began to shine because of God. Amen. God has blessed you in a better way. He has moved you as never before into his life. Here it is. And maybe, hey, maybe you feel that you cannot possibly overcome the forces against you. Amen. You have made up in your mind that there's no way, shape, form, or fashion that you're going to be able to win this battle because they're too educated. They're too smart. They have too many words. Amen. They know too many people. They're going to stop 
stop me. Amen. They are too manipulative. They have all of this. But I want you to know God knew what you were going to face before you knew it. Amen. He has already set in plan a motion. Amen. That gets you as long as you stand firm on his word. He will operate for you as never before. Amen. You have to know that God is in control. He understands. Amen. That there is. We are dealing with it. The things that may seem that be getting better. And we're looking through it. And we're wrestling with it. But there is always hope. I've come to share with you this morning. That there's always hope. Amen. Hope beyond the grave. Amen. You're saying, well, preacher, what does that mean? That even if God comes, amen, and decides to call my ticket and take me home, there's still hope. Amen. There's hope that I'm not going to be in the other place. Amen. That he will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Because even when it seems like all hope is lost, and when even when it seems like you're nearly almost make you will never make it through it. Amen. There is an entire army that's fighting for you. I, I need you to understand it. Don't think that you're by yourself. Amen. That is the trick of the enemy. and That is why depression is running rampant is because you feel you're by yourself. Amen. But I've come to tell you, you're not alone in this battle. Amen. The God I serve, he walks with me. Amen. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share none other has known there's something about being a vessel of righteousness there's something about being a child of God amen that you know that he keeps us in our arms amen you know the story about the three the four the footsteps on the sand amen when you see two sets of them walking and then during the difficult times you only see one set amen what happened God did you leave me what happened God did you forget about me. Uh, it, no, he tells us it was those times uh, that I had to pick you up uh, and carry you through uh, what you were going through. Somebody ought to scream in here. Uh, amen. That he'd never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, amen. An army that will not let you down uh, because it's far greater than more powerful uh, than any force of darkness uh, and the pain of your life. Uh, amen. No matter how difficult your life is uh, and know how difficult your pain is. Uh, the God I serve is about to bring you out. Uh, amen. You got to find peace. Uh, amen. And I tell people on a regular basis, uh, do not allow other folk uh, to break your peace. Uh, amen. Stay by God uh, in the peace of God. Uh, amen. Walk in the peace. Uh, operate in the peace. Uh, amen. Don't let it pull you out out. Uh, struggle and stay there because the God we serve uh, is going to operate in your favor. Uh, amen. He isn't planning or letting or go of any time or soon. Uh, amen. God is holding on to you. Uh, he's sending an entire army to fight for you. Uh, amen. I heard in Deuteronomy, uh, he said they will come against you one way uh, and flee before these seven ways. Uh, that's somebody that's scurrying for their life. Uh, amen. They're trying to get away from everything. Uh, but I've come to give you a word uh, that there's peace uh, in the pine of God. Uh, there's peace in his armor. Uh, there's peace in his arms. Uh, so the weapons that come against us uh, has no ability to stop us uh, from what God is doing. Uh, he's sending this entire enemy. Uh, don't you dare let go. Uh, I'm telling you in refuge temple. Uh, Amen. And on the airways, don't you dare let us go. I'm holding on. I'm holding to my faith. My faith said, don't let go. Amen. It looks like I'm almost going to throw in the towel. And I say, Lord, even when I can't keep myself, I need you to keep me. Hold me in your arms. Oh, God, like you never did before. I feel it in my soul spirit. Uh, he begins to run it. Uh, you are fighting alone. Uh, don't think that you're just bobbing and weaving uh, and throwing jabs on your own. Uh, amen. God 
is fighting for you. I heard in John chapter 6, somewhere in verse 37, and if I can remember it clearly from the message version, it said every person that the Father gives eventually comes running to me. And once they person is with me, I hold them and I won't let go. This is God saying that when you run to him, I heard witness say it, but she was talking about something else. I'm going to run to him. But when you run to God and throw yourself in his arms, he will hold on to you. Anybody in here knows that the God I serve is holding you and keeping you. I dare you to shout for joy and say, hold on. Nah, just a little while longer and the God I serve will bless you. I read somewhere, amen, in the book of Isaiah and I read in the text and I have to write it down. In the 43rd chapter, it begins to say it on this way. He said, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. When you walk with him, he's with you. That's why you got a tambourine. He walked Miriam across the Red Sea, and when her and the other women got on the other side, they took out their tambourines, amen, and began to play. Somebody give me a tambourine. Uh, they began to pray. They prayed until everybody that was on the other side came in the victory. I've come to give you a word. Let's help somebody get to victory. Let's help somebody walk through the struggle in 2023. That selfish demon has got to find a new home because it can't live here anymore. That demon of confusion, uh, of backbiting, uh, of lying uh, and confusion. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I cast you out. Uh, get out of here. Uh, loose her. Uh, loose him. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, if you agree with me uh, and you're touching with me, uh, say three times uh, in the name. Uh, in the name. In the name. I've come to say, I'm just about over with this. Amen. I want you to know uh, that your eyes have been corrected. Uh, amen. Your mind has been set free. Uh, the things that you're dealing with, uh, amen, are about to move in your life. Uh, amen. We've been struggling and straining, uh, but we're almost there. Uh, I began to read the word. Uh, amen. Last night, oh God, uh, I couldn't go to bed. Uh, amen. Because I needed to read. Uh, and I had read the story over and over. Amen. But there was a part that I was leaving out. And I need you to turn with me. Amen to your Bibles. The 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. And I want to pick it up on the 18th verse. Amen. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Oh my God. God. Look at somebody and say a new thing. Amen. We've been struggling with the old stuff. We keep worrying about what has happened in the past. But God's ready to do a new thing. He's ready to change your life. I heard somebody that will scream up in here say new thing. I want a refreshing God. I want a new anointing. I want a breakthrough anointing. I want an anointing that wherever I walk, people will fall out in the power of 
God. I need a new anointing. I need a new transparent attitude. Change my mind. Change my heart. To deliver me from my sins. I need a new attitude. I need a new attitude. I need a new walk. I want to get closer to you. I want to love everybody. I want to be that remarkable idea of who you are. And I want to have love for all my brothers. I want to have love for all my sisters. I love you. And you can't stop me. I want to do a new thing. Oh God. And now shall come forth spring forth. Shall thou not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in desert. In a dry place, I will bless the fields and shall honor me and the dragons and the owls because I have given water in the wilderness and water in the desert. I will drink up my people because you're my choice. He's getting ready to do a new thing. He's getting ready to operate like you've never seen it. He's changed my vision. I'm not looking at you crybabies. I'm not looking at you gossipers. I'm not looking at you fools that are trying to step in and hinder the voice of the Lord. My mind's made up and I made up in my mind that I'm going to see Jesus. I got to see him. He's coming again for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ. All those corona victims, they gonna get up and we which remain shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye. I'm gonna put on the robe. I'm gonna put on the crown. I'm gonna walk in this place. I'm gonna talk in this place. I got new vision. I see him working. I got a corrected vision. He's operating like never before. Somebody, anybody that know it's happening, scream up in here. Isaiah, in chapter 6, he finds himself at the altar. And when he's at the altar, the angel, President McQueen, goes and gets some coals off the altar. Amen. And he brings it in some tongs. Those things that allows him to hold it without being burned. Amen. You can't be close to God's anointing and not be burned. And you're saying, well, Bishop, it's not going to burn me up. No, it's not going to burn you up in that way. It's going to burn up the sin. Burn up the sin. He takes those tongues and he does what with them? He places it on his mouth. Amen. I ain't getting nothing too hot. If I drink a cup of tea, it is hot. I'm burn, blowing all the way. And letting them come too close. He puts it on them. And then when he finishes purifying him, look at somebody say, purify me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Amen. The fire that purifies me. Purify me, Lord. And once you have been purified, Jesus will say, who will go? And he says, here am I. Are you saying send me? Or are you just happy just coming to church on Sunday and running around for a few moments? Or are you operating in your anointing and your calling that God is calling you to a higher place of praise? My God, I don't know about you, and I can say this, amen, if I don't say nothing else. Amen. There were some places I didn't want to go. Amen. But when I got there, amen, the Lord blessed me. Now, they, they take me off there. Amen. I want to tell you this. I went to a small church in Florida. Amen. They called for me. And I went there to preach. This is many, many years ago. 
When I got in there, hey amen, there's only about seven people. It's about the whole thing for the whole revival. Mother, we didn't get past seven people. And I was like, man, I took every dime I had to get there. I took every dime I had to get there. When I got there, there were seven people. So, because I began to look from my eyes, I said, how am I going to get home, Lord? You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been in that situation before? How am I going to get home? How am I going to make it through this? And the Lord said, just preach. Preach like this. The house is full. I preached out of my jacket, out of my tie. I think I almost lost a shoe. Preach it. Every day to them same people. They didn't even have no tambourines 